There's a small but, you know, rather remarkable detail buried in the supply lists, survival manuals and field kit inventories of the Cold War era. Something that doesn't really get the spotlight because, well, it isn't a weapon, a coded device or a piece of classified technology. Yet soldiers, scouts and civil defence workers actually trusted it far more than the plastic tarps that would later flood the market. For the next minute, just stay with that curiosity that, honestly, serious history enthusiasts know all too well. When you trace the stories of Cold War outposts, border patrol shelters, mountain listening stations and improvised field camps, you'll notice a recurring item. A heavy, tightly woven canvas that resisted water better than many modern synthetics. It wasn't glamorous, but it was so reliable that even after decades in storage, many of these canvases still shed rain, as if they'd been made yesterday. And you see, the reason it never leaked wasn't luck. It was a deliberate, time-tested method of treatment that, frankly, modern survivalists would be wise to relearn. The Cold War canvas worked because, well, it used a traditional waterproofing method perfected long before plastic even existed. The success of this canvas, really, came from the combination of its weave and its treatment. Cold War militaries, especially in Europe and the Eastern Bloc, relied on cotton or linen duck canvas woven so tightly that water had trouble, you know, forcing its way through. But the magic came afterward. Before distribution, the fabric was soaked in a solution of linseed oil, tall oil, or a blend of plant-based oils, sometimes mixed with mineral spirits to help penetration. As the treated canvas cured, the oils oxidized and polymerized, turning into a flexible waterproof film embedded within the fibers. This wasn't a coating on top. It was a transformation throughout the fabric. The process mirrored the way medieval sailors waterproof sails, or the way trappers treated packs and tents in the 19th century. The Cold War military simply improved the consistency and scale. The treatment strengthened the canvas instead of weakening it as modern plastics often do. What really set this Cold War canvas apart from modern tarps was that its waterproofing increased durability rather than reducing it. You see, plastic tarps become brittle tear at the grommets and degrade under sun exposure. The oil-hardened canvas, on the other hand, became tougher the more it aged. The fibres swelled slightly as oil cured, tightening the weave even further. This meant that small punctures didn't spread into large tears. Snow could accumulate on top without stretching the material. Constant wind didn't cause flapping damage. And because the waterproofing was within the fabric, even abrasions from rocks or brush wouldn't cause leaks. Many Cold War field tents made from this material are still used by reenactors and survival instructors today, with only minimal maintenance. The canvas remained breathable, preventing condensation that would ruin shelters and equipment. One of the most overlooked advantages of the Cold War canvas was its breathability. While plastic tarps trap moisture and cause condensation inside shelters, the treated canvas allowed water vapour to escape while blocking liquid water. This was uh, critical in the Cold War environment, where condensed moisture could freeze inside field tents or soak radios, ammunition and cold-weather gear. Soldiers operating in the boreal forests of Scandinavia, the Carpathians and Siberia reported that these canvas shelters stayed dry inside even in storms. 
The breathability kept down frost buildup and prevented mold, two hazards that plagued early synthetic fabrics. You can, you know, replicate this Cold War waterproofing method using traditional materials and techniques. Start with heavy canvas, cotton duck, army surplus fabric, or untreated sailcloth. Aim for a dense weave, as the weave itself is part of the waterproofing. Mix boiled linseed oil with mineral spirits at roughly a one-to-one -one ratio. The mineral spirits thin the oil and help it soak deep into the fibres. Now you'll want to apply the mixture with a brush, or perhaps a roller, or by soaking smaller pieces directly, whatever works best for your project. After that, let the fabric cure outdoors in a well-ventilated area for several days. It's important not to rush this step, as proper curing ensures the best results. As the linseed oil oxidises, you'll notice the canvas darken and stiffen just a bit while becoming water-resistant. If you'd like to mimic the old Cold War approach even more closely, you can add beeswax or pine tar to the mixture. These ingredients create a more rugged finish, especially for gear that'll face frequent abrasion. Once everything's cured, go ahead and test the canvas by pooling water on the surface. A properly treated canvas will cause water to bead up and roll right off. This method, honestly, works well for tarps, packs, tent flies, bushcraft shelters and even long-term gear covers. Unlike those synthetic waterproofing sprays that tend to degrade rather quickly, this approach can last for years, giving you reliable protection and peace of mind in the field. The Cold War canvas performed better because, well, it was built for real-world hardship, not just for convenience. The most important insight from this forgotten fabric is that durability often comes from time-tested principles rather than flashy industrial shortcuts. Cold War militaries understood that troops operating in remote exposed areas needed gear that simply would not fail under pressure. Plastic tarps, you know, tear instantly when stressed, but treated canvas adapts, flexes, and just keeps working, even when it's scraped, bent, folded, or even frozen. This kind of reliability had real consequences. Field radios stayed operational because the canvas covers protected them. Border troops managed to stay dry in snowstorms. Temporary depots could store ammunition without any water infiltration. In survival terms, this canvas really represented security in an unpredictable world. This forgotten material actually offers practical lessons for modern survivalists and outdoor builders. If you find yourself relying heavily on plastic tarps for shelter building or off-grid living, this Cold War method offers a valuable alternative. Oil-hardened canvas, you know, can serve as a long-term roof for a cabin lean-to. It can also be stretched over frames for field workshops. And, well, it can function as a ground sheet that simply won't shred under heavy use. Even bushcraft packs made from treated canvas gain decades of life with little maintenance. Treating your own canvas also really fosters independence. Instead of depending on fragile synthetics with short lifespans, you can create gear grounded in historical durability. For cold climates, breathable waterproof fabric is not just convenient. It can be the difference between a dry night and a dangerous one. This is why the Cold War canvas deserves attention. It wasn't just equipment, it was a survival system in itself 
rooted in centuries of craftsmanship and refined through the practical demands of modern conflict. Thank you for joining us on In the Beginning. If this guide deepened your understanding of historical survival gear, be sure to subscribe, share the video, and help bring more forgotten knowledge back into the conversation.